Look at this guy. Look at his attributes, his personality. What do you think he could turn into? Well, if you said this, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life, then you would be right. But of course, you're missing a lot of the context clues here. This is one of the most difficult things to do in Football Manager. This video is a graduate course in Football Manager in the art of identifying wonder kids that can turn into great players. And at the end of this video, you will have all of the tools you need to make excellent decisions. Now, there are not a lot of Nahuel Cisneros in the world, obviously, because this kid, at the time this picture is taken, is 16 years old. If you see a 16-year-old with this kind of current ability, these attributes already, the odds are that they're definitely going to be one of the best players in the world, but even that is not for sure. And that's because Football Manager obscures information. You see, this shot is from 2024 in my Twitch save with Taunton Town, and we are in the non-league levels of football, which means not only is his potential ability incredibly high, his current ability is incredibly high. That's because the ability ratings are, of course, relative to your squad. Now, in a graduate course, of course, you already know that when it comes to the current ability of the player. But what you might not think about as much is that also has to do with the potential ability of the player. And not only is that hard enough to interpret how good a player could be relative to the rest of the quality of your team, well, that rating is provided by a member of your staff, according to their judging player ability and judging player potential attributes. Each player also has an incredibly large array of of hidden attributes. They are as follows. Adaptability, ambition, loyalty, pressure, professionalism, sportsmanship, temperament, controversy, consistency, dirtiness, important matches, injury proneness, and versatility. But of course, when you're playing, you at least probably won't have the in-game editor activated, so you can't see that stuff. The other part of the subjectivity, the obscurity of Football Manager is that literally no two players are alike because there's so many different attributes. Some may fit your style and your team, some may not. Some players might really complement each other, others might just get in each other's way. And the last bit of subjectivity is you have to decide whether you have the capacity to develop said player, and we're getting into all of this. First, though, it's important to understand how development in Football Manager works. Because players, even if they are Nahuel Cisneros and literally have a hard-coded potential of 200, which is the highest in the game, they don't fundamentally change who they are. You see, Nahuel Cisneros had a perfect developmental path. He came in at a good club in Argentina, joined Liverpool at the age of 18, had 19 out of 20 professionalism, which is the most important hidden attribute for development, and had a potential ability that quite literally could not be any higher. In that perfect situation, the most an attribute changed on any one of his attributes was agility at nine. But essentially, for any player that's not Nahuel Cisneros, even from the age of 16 to the peak of their career, no attribute is gonna change more than six or maybe seven, absolutely pushing it. So what does this mean? Well, let me load into my Twitch save and show you. And while I'm doing that, if you wanna subscribe to the YouTube channel, you know, you totally could. And let's take a look at this player, Rafael Riquero. We signed Rafa Riquero at 18 from Liverpool, FC in Uruguay. You knew the one. He had four and a half gold star potential, the highest that you could have in the game relative to our current squad's ability, and we were already on the fringe of Europe in the Premier League. So that's a pretty high ability. He's been given regular Premier League playing time every season, along with the second highest level of training facilities and excellent mentors. That's a feature in training where you create a training group with one old guy who's got a really good personality to help raise the hidden attributes of a player. And over the next five years, from the age of 18 to the age of 23, this is the total improvement that Rafael Riquero has undergone. And in Football Manager, this is considered a massive improvement. Now, we focused on quickness, which highlights acceleration and pace, because we wanted him to be able to play in a box-to-box -box sort of role instead of being a slower anchor-type player. As such, he's improved dramatically in his acceleration. He's also gotten much, much smarter because of his exposure to a much higher reputation league. But you'll notice that none of these improvements are really over three, with the very rare exception of two that have improved by four. And while this improvement is great. When we signed Rafa Riquero, we knew what we were getting. Even though he has all this potential, he was never going to be a magical dribbler. He's never going to be a particularly good goal scorer. He's always going to be kind of aloof. His concentration is low, and he's not a particular creative genius. Even though his flair has improved three, it's still only 12. Even when you find players like Riquero that you think project out to this excellent development, they're not going to change the type of player that they are. Riquero was always going to be a smart, reliably positioned player. We could add things to his game, 
but not too much. It's one of the most common mistakes I see people make when they start really trying to sign Wonder Kids in Football Manager for the first time is they sign everybody with five-star potential and think they're just gonna become world beaters at everything. And unfortunately, that's just not how it works in real life or in the game. Another way to conceptualize it is you'd be very fortunate for a player to improve 25% at any given attribute. So if we wind it back to this picture of Rafael Riquero two months after we signed him, that'll hopefully condition your brain for how to project certain players forward. We focused on his quickness because that's something we really thought he needed to improve to be able to contribute more on our team. There's only so much you can do to tailor what this player is going to look like. Most of it is already out of your control based off what type of player they are. What you didn't know is that you've fallen backwards into number one on a list of keys that you need to understand. And that first key is don't expect a player to be something they're not or you will always be disappointed. Leandro Galvan's a player I'm developing in my Taunton Town save. I never think this guy is going to be a well-rounded player. The best case scenario is he turns into a freak athlete who is at least passive at most things you need to be able to do. But honestly, I've had him for two years. His potential has fallen from full five stars to three and a half to four and a half, and his personality is still only balanced, which means I'm probably gonna look to sell him for profit because I don't think the development is there. And that is because the second thing you need to understand, just because they have the potential doesn't mean they're going to reach it. Now, Juan Cisneros is beautiful because he has 200 potential ability, but he also had 19 out of 20 professionalism. Now, we've tested this multiple times, different ways over multiple multiple years. Professionalism by far has the greatest effect on player development when it comes to all of the hidden attributes. Things like ambition have smaller effects, but professionalism is what you really need to focus on. And we have a website that I will link in the description that allows you to type in a player's personality and their media description to figure out what their professionalism range is. But I can tell you based off balanced and media friendly here that Leandro Galvan's professionalism is not particularly high. Oh yeah, personality and media handling are the only two ways you can determine a player's professionalism other than just observing how they develop. But while those two things are incredibly important, there is something else that can affect a player like Leandro Galvan. You see, Leandro Galvan had to make a big jump from Argentina to England a couple of years ago. Now, there is a hidden attribute that pops up in scouting reports called adaptability. It's that little suitcase emblem, and it can either be green or orange or even red if it's terrible. Adaptability affects the player's ability to change into a new environment. The lower the player's adaptability, the longer it's going to take to get them more comfortable in that environment so that they can start more effectively developing. If we take Nahuel Cisneros, and even though he has 19 professionalism, we put his adaptability at one, the lowest it can possibly be, then move him to Liverpool at 18, it will take him a lot longer to start developing, and as a result, he will not end up being as good of a player. This can result in players like Leandro Galvan that appear to be an illusion. Players can also come in through your youth intake with very highly rated potential, then not develop at all, and those are what I call illusionists. There are certain players in the game that everybody just degrees have high potential, but they don't actually have it. Or their hidden attributes are so irrevocably bad that they actually have no chance to reach that potential. So it's just fool's errands. But there are a couple of things you can do to combat this adaptability. One is simply be patient. If a player has very high potential and they have some pretty good current ability already and you like the way their personality looks with their media handling style, well then give them a year. Maybe even two if they had red adaptability coming over because even though they won't have the same development potential as somebody with excellent adaptability, they still could turn into a very good player if you give them time to adjust. The other thing to keep in mind with adaptability is if they don't have the current ability to currently be in your first team, which means that you have to loan them out in order to develop, adapt Adaptability is going to bother them. There's a way around this though. Can you loan them back to the league from whence they came? In which case adaptability is not going to be nearly as much of a problem. Or if you're signing a player, for example, from South or Central America that speaks Spanish, you can then loan them to a place like Spain that also, spoilers, speaks Spanish. Football Manager does factor that in and makes it easier for those players to handle that development. It's why there's a whole language dynamic in the game. When you sign guys, you send them on intensive language courses. That is in order to over overcome their potential developmental shortfalls, pitfalls, shortcomings, but combined. But to point number three, trust your eyes. Leandro Galvan's had two years. He's had a very good loan to Ligue 1 in which he has also not improved that much. He's now 20 years old and asking for a new contract. And according to number three, I'm going to trust my eyes and probably just sell him because he's running out of time. Players develop until they turn 26. From the age of 19 to 26, they develop at a constant rate, which means Leandro Galvan is now developing at a rate where attributes can improve at most one per year. If they're 18 down to 15, attributes can develop a lot more than that in 
in one year, but Galvan is not going to experience explosive development anymore. And to be honest, most players you sign aren't going to experience explosive development anymore. You'll only really see that with players that come through your youth intake, unless you happen to be in a region where you can sign players that are 16 or 17 years old. But another reason to trust your eyes is that players can surprise you. Staying in my Twitch save, in every single save I've played on Football Manager that I've gone more than 10 years, there has been one Richard Gregory. At no point has Richard Gregory's potential been five stars. When he came in through my youth intake, I was not particularly excited about it. He looked like a dime a dozen, another two and a half to three and a half star potential type player. A Will Bennett, a Paul Hines, an Alex Parcelli. But rather unusually, and at a very young age, perhaps because of his professionalism noted in the personality or just a confluence of lucky factors, he's become a very good player. A player that at just the age of 19 is considered a decent Premier League player worth near nearly $30 million. Last year, it was Christian Yildiz. All the way back to FM 2020, it was a guy named Denis Kozlov. I remember these guys' names because I saw a ton of upward arrows and the fact that they were getting better, and I just kept having faith in them. Do not give up on players who are giving you consistent upward arrows. And once he comes back from loan, I can go to that helpful screen we looked at with Rafa Riquero to see if that improvement in the arrows is being reflected in his overall attributes. And if you don't know how to find that screen, you just go to development, progress, and then you go up to the top right here and click all time. And it will show you the all time improvement of attributes since that player signed for your team. Another helpful way to break down if a player's development is lining up with the rest of your team is the comparison tool. So Richard Gregory wants to be a first team player, he's going to have to push Eduardo Delgado out of his first team spot, which he's not likely to do. But if I compare him to Paupol Badia Mwanga, who is the backup for that spot, you can see that Richard Gregory is already right next to him. This is a guy a year ago that I didn't really care about, but I trusted my eyes, I trusted the arrows, we gave him a loan, which he has taken full advantage of, and we managed to not get in his way while he became the best version of himself. Wow, that sounded like a self-help book. Number four, keep a short list of the players that you really, 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 really want to keep an eye on. Make sure the short list doesn't get too long, but this is an important tool used to keep track of Wonder Kids so you don't lose track of them. When you are managing world-class teams, you have a lot of young players come across your desk and only a few make you go, ooh. I cannot tell you how many times I've been saved by my short list when I just look at it in the middle of a transfer window because I'm bored and I see somebody I forgot about that I end up signing for 3.1 million that turns into Rafael Riquero. And number five, it's okay if you get it wrong. It is inevitable that you are going to get it wrong. I have played 10,000 hours of Football Manager. I make tutorials about Football Manager as a large part of my living. And I'm the one that signed Leandro Galvan. As a great song once said, you gotta know when to hold him and know when to fold him. And I'm folding on Galvan on but I also signed Rafa Riquero. So life is okay. Helpful tips. One, look at a player and then improve their attributes by three in most of the areas that their position focuses on. If you like the way that player looks and you trust their personality and potential, it's probably a good signing. If you still don't like the way that player looks, don't do it. So if I'm looking at this guy, Gaston Cortina, if I improve everything here, three to four, do I think he is great? At 20 million, I'm probably in a pass. And that's the process. Also, if you're having trouble finding these wonder kids to have to make these decisions on in the first place, scout youth international tournaments. Not some of them, all of them. Scout the players in youth international tournaments. At the very least, scout the ones that are unusually young, like a 16, 17, 18 year old at a U21 tournament, or a 19 year old in a senior national team. Combine that with a few recruitment focuses where your potential ability is fairly high, but your current ability is really low, and your age range caps at 23, and you'll find players. Oh, the last thing, if you're not in a top league, this video is not for you. If you're not in a top league, you need to just be signing the best current players players you can find to get into the top league. If you stumble into a wonder kid, great, but that's not the point of where you are. I'll see you on stream. And if you want a more in-depth guide about how to develop these wonder kids, once they're on your team, this video is the one for you. And I hope you have a fabulous day.